I'm sure you know how to learn more vocabulary. I'm sure you know how to practice grammar. But something that we don't spend enough time thinking about is the psychology of actually using English. Speaking another language is not mathematics. We can't just learn some rules and apply them. We are humans and when we use a second language, we are interacting with other humans. So we have feelings, we get nervous, we get embarrassed. So we need to think about this psychological aspect of language use. It really makes me sad when I see students who know the language. They know the grammar, they know the vocabulary, they know all the rules, they know all the pieces to the puzzle, but there's a psychological barrier that is stopping them from actually using the language effectively. So today I want to introduce a couple of strategies that you can use to speak more confidently in the future. My name is Colin, I'm an English teacher in Tokyo and on this channel you'll find videos giving you tips and advice on learning English. The first technique I want to talk about is called visualization. To visualize something means to see it in your mind. This is a technique that is used by many athletes, tennis players, soccer players, Formula One drivers, they use visualization to help them perform at the highest level when they are competing. So if it works well for them, then maybe we can learn something too. So what you're going to try to do is imagine yourself having a successful conversation with a classmate, a colleague, or maybe even ordering food in a restaurant or asking directions. This is something that I do a lot here in Japan. If I know that I'm going to have a conversation that I've never had before, maybe I need to go to the bank and do something or I need to go to the post office, I will try to imagine what that conversation is going to be like. And I will try to imagine it in as much detail as possible. Not just what I'm going to say, but what is the other person going to say? So I'm trying to prepare for that interaction in advance. So what you would do is simply find a place that you can sit quietly, you would close your eyes and you try to imagine that positive situation. This could be ordering food in a restaurant, meeting somebody for the first time, or maybe even checking in at the airport for a flight. So try to imagine the situation in as much detail as you can. Imagine the location, the surroundings, imagine your body language, imagine the sound of the other person's voice. All of this helps to make it more real in your mind. It's also important to try to feel the success. How does it feel when you have that positive conversation, that positive interaction? It's really important to feel that joy, to feel the, the pride that you've done what you set out to achieve. And don't just do it once. Try to do it again and again. Try to make that image as strong as you can in your mind. And the next time you're in that situation, you will have a lot more confidence. You know how this is going to go because you've imagined it before. The next thing I want to talk about is affirmations, positive affirmations. Positive affirmations are like friendly reminders to ourselves. Uh, we often have some very negative thoughts in our mind. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not rich enough, whatever. We have these messages that we tell ourselves in our mind. But a positive affirmation is a little reminder that actually we can do things and that we are successful and that we are working towards being better. So what we're trying to do is replace the negative thoughts with positive thoughts. We're actually trying to rewire the brain. This can give you a positive mindset and boost your confidence. Positive affirmations should be personal. Um, but I'm going to give you some examples that you can use to start with. And then as you become more familiar with the technique, you can start to create your own affirmations. So let's look at a few examples. I am becoming more fluent in English every day. My language skills are improving with each conversation. I am confident in expressing myself in English. Mistakes are opportunities for learning, 
and I value them. I am committed to learning English and I celebrate my progress. Patience is important and I trust my ability to learn English at my own pace. Each challenge is a step closer to fluency. So I'm sure you can see the difference between these kind of phrases and the things that we often say to ourselves in our mind. And if we can say these phrases daily, out loud, it will over time start to rewire your brain. Just saying it once is not going to make a big difference. This is a long-term strategy. So what I suggest is that you pick two or three affirmations that really connect with you and your goals and you find a place where you can say them out loud. If you can, have a post-it note on the mirror um, in your bathroom so that you can say to yourself, looking in the mirror, these affirmations each day. Repeating these affirmations regularly really help you to become more resilient. So every time you face some kind of challenge, you understand that you can get through it and you can continue to get better in the future. So give it a try. Get two or three of these affirmations, write them on a post-it note and put them on the mirror. Read them out loud when you're getting ready every morning. As a language learner, I know the importance of psychology when speaking a second language. So take some time, try these techniques. They're not magic. They're not going to make everything better overnight. But over time, you can start to change the way that you experience using your second language. If you found this video useful, please make sure to like, subscribe, share it with a friend, leave a comment below if you have some ideas for affirmations, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.